Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to my solo base building guide for solo players. I'm just going to give you guys a base design that you guys will be able to repeat very easily wherever you want to. Um, through the holidays, I might give you guys some other base building tips. But as I'm a purist and I, you know, I enjoy myself solo, of course, we all enjoy ourselves more with friends. But I do feel this base design will help with um, solo and duo players. But there's a lot of aspects that you need to think about when building a base. Like I'm making a lot of changes to all my servers to make it a lot more fun for you guys. Um, and for you guys just to be able to experience a lot and be rewarded for the small amount of time that you have to play the game. Um, and then for the other people that play 12 hours a day, you know, I'll get a lot of data from them um, if they're farming things all day long. But in any case, a lot of people like these cabins, okay? And I understand why, why they like the cabins. Loot respawns inside here. Um, you've got a stove, okay? Um, some of the places have a fridge as well. You've got a nice fireplace. You've got wood. Um, you can't blow through this. So people are forced to lockpick in here. Now, at the moment, there's a lot of experienced lockpickers. So... I don't see a cabin as a major advantage because no matter what I put around it, a lock picker or um, explosives can still get to the building. And then I've just basically got one door that's mentally helping me to say they can't blow in. They have to go through here. But this door doesn't have a BCU lock, which is a major thing for me um, to not you know, to not be lock picked offline. Um, yes, you can put a you can put other you can put a wall around the base. I'm just focusing on the cabin on its own. Okay, can't have a BCU. Just have three locks and one zapper. Okay, or padlocks or whatever the case may be. So, um, will this will this make a major difference whether you get raided or not? And that's what I want to discuss with you guys when we look at cabins. Because of scummap.com, because of game knowledge, most players know where all the cabins are on the map, okay? So if they don't have clear targets, cabins are usually an easy way for them to go look for a raid, okay? Um, for instance, if you build very close to a POI and, a lot of, and your base is easy to find, you're making yourself an easy target. If you build at a cabin, you're also making yourself an easy target because there's not a lot of them. So raiders don't have to search the entire map, okay? And you've, you're basically forced to do a specific design, you know? You have to put the walls carefully. Sometimes there's wood gear in the way. Um, you know, you have to go for a specific design. All of the cabins are a little bit different. And yes, you can make it homely with a little table here and everything, but I still feel the advantages of it is not as major as people might think. Now, the ability to decide where you want to build your base is very important. And this building something that doesn't take a lot of base parts. Now, on my service, people can build up to 500 base parts, but if you have to upgrade 500 base parts as a solo or a duo team, um, it's going to take you a really, really long time, okay? So the big things that we need to focus on within the first five minutes of this video is the, the advantages of building a base is that you can build it wherever you want. And there's a lot of places on the map that people don't go to a lot, okay? There's a lot of places. There's nothing for people really to go to here, okay? There's a lot of place in the snow, a lot of places on the mountains. People don't really go up mountains. People don't really go to places where there's no reason for them to be there, okay? Um, the, forest have, uh, the forests have a lot of protection, and when you build in a forest, you can look at what's the POIs or loot around you and then make a decision about that, Okay? So let's look at the other option where you can build something fairly the same 
and just uh, and feel just as good. Now, here we are at basically the same design, okay? Um, without the people can't blow through my wall, but we're not sitting with a ton of base parts, okay? This is two, this is basically two, one 10 meter wall, five meter wall and a three meter wall. Then on the side, we're sitting with one 10 meter wall. And then here at the back, we're sitting with two five meter, you know, a 10 meter piece, a five meter piece and a three meter piece to make it very linear. Okay, very nice, neat and linear. Again, two five meter pieces. And the big thing that you have to focus on when building a base is that 500 tweak base parts isn't worth anything, okay? One tweak base part um, or one concrete wall is worth 10 twig walls, okay? And then one cement wall is worth four wooden walls, and that's how we go up and we go up and we go up, okay? But at the end of the day, to defend your base to the maximum, you need to be able to get to cement so that it takes quite a lot of effort to get into your base, and from this design, you can go whichever way you want. But this is a very good baseline for solo players, okay? So to upgrade this out of wall to concrete won't take you a lifetime. But if you build a 500-part base, it will take you a lifetime, okay? You can put a few warnings down. You can put a lot of mines down. And then when we come into the base... Okay, you've got enough space for a car, you've got enough space for a bike. Of course, you're going to need wood and stuff to build the base. So you've got your log cabins over here, you've got your well, you've got a wheelbarrow, you've got some target practice in case you're struggling with a bow. And because of the 0.95 update, I suggest you practice um, in your base with the target, stand close to it, see where the arrows go, try to figure, you know, try to get yourself used to. Um, how to shoot with a bow, okay, constantly. We've got a little space for a farm here. Um, it's got six plots, okay. You can put some garlic here. Um, you can put um, corn. Um, you know, whatever you need for certain foods that you like cooking. Like I like vegetable stews. So I'm going to probably plant a, you know, a row of corn or potatoes. I'll have my garlic. And then, you know, I'll maybe... Put a watermelon patch down because watermelon is good for water and whatever the case may be, okay? You can ignore this practice and just build a farm down here, okay? You can build a massive farm if you want to. Then you've got your workbench so that you can craft ammo because at the moment crafting ammo, upgrading a base and um, crafting crap ammo, you know, is really, really good for fame. You've got your little fireplace here, you've got a loot place, you've got a generator, you've got two electric, because we look, we're using an electric generator, you've got two electric stoves, which you can cook really nice food at, you've got a chest to just put the food at and the stuff that you're getting from the farm, you can move, because you're in your, in your flag area, you can move this chest to where you want, okay, so you can get the stuff easier from the farm, and you're sitting here with a cabin-sized building which is just as good as a cabin, okay? The only difference is you can put a BCU lock on here, you can put three locks on, and you can put two zappers on, okay? And it will take quite a bit to get in here. And the big thing for a solo or a duo team is if you're a duo, you can go one block further, okay? And just adjust the outer walls. But again, you can put multiple walls outside of this base. But at the end of the day, you've got everything that you need in here, and it's good. A lot of you might say, I can fill up these, you know, I can fill up these wardrobes within a week. Yes, but the, the, the effect that a raid has on you has got a lot to do with how much loot you're hoarding. So the capability to limit the amount of loot that you are gathering helps you a lot when it when it comes to being raided because if you've got a 500 part base and you've got 10,000 items in there a raid is going to affect you because apparently you want to collect 10,000 items but if you don't collect um, 10,000 items then a little base like this can be very very handy okay the 
the weapon racks are really, really good. Like if you want to go into total war, you go for the M249 and the M82. Then if you want to go hunt some animals, you take the Hunter 85. Um, if you just want to run around and be able to kill people quite effectively, you can use the Carbon Hunter um, with the VSS. Okay, and if you get killed, you can quickly come back and maybe grab an MK18, grab, grab a VHS, spawn at your bed. Maybe you were driving the car, maybe you were driving the bike, you know, and you can try and get back to wherever you died. If you loot places close to you, um, then you can, you know, you can try and get back into the fight if you want to. But what I'm trying to say is you can still make it very, very homely. And this doesn't take a lot to build okay this doesn't take a lot of time but it still serves all your needs the only difference is that you don't have a, a stove okay you can put a fridge in you can put a fridge inside here as well you just don't have a stove but i mean you can build your base um close to a town that has a stove okay um you know, you can build your base close to a town if you really, really want to cook some cake or you know, bake some cake or whatever. And then if this isn't enough for you, you can just go again, okay? But first do this. See how much time it takes because every layer you add is going to take a heck of a lot of time and a heck of a lot of looting. But I just feel this design which is small enough for you to be able to place it wherever you want, on a mountain, um, you know, in a smaller forest, in a ditch. Like, there's a lot of forest areas where the ground goes lower than it actually is like a ditch, and the, the hill, you know, the little bumps or the little ground raises around you actually hides your base. Okay, you can easily build this on a small little island, it's like a portable base where you can build it wherever you want. And the time that it takes to get to this level isn't going to take you forever. So even if you feel you're being targeted and you feel like one clan is targeting you, you may be in their area or you're very close to them and they just want to kick you out of their zone. Moving this, like building this at another location, isn't the end of the world. And then it will take effort again to find you and you'll be interacting with other clans and, you know, things will start over for you instead of just leaving the server going, no, I'm going to build a base in another place. So in the comments down below, tell me what you guys like doing. I know there's people that like cave bases. I'm not really a cave base fan but i will make a guide one day just showing you guys all the caves which ones i like which ones i don't like um different strategies that you can use with caves you know different strategies that you can maybe use with water but for me this is the most effective cost effective time effective base where i can have everything i want and be wherever i want to be and have the freedom to enjoy the game without really being extremely angry when I get raided. But I can still, you know, trap the poop out of this place. If you've got a massive base, like if the base starts there and it ends over there, then I have to place a heck of a lot of traps to cover every angle. The smaller your base is, the, the, the less traps it's going to take. Okay, putting barbed wire around this thing isn't going to take a lot of time. You know, covering this base with a lot of traps um, isn't going to take a lot of time. So please, guys, leave your comments down below. Um, click the like button if you like this design. Um, please give me your ideas down below. But please, let's stay away from exploits and, you know, things that aren't supposed to, um, isn't meant in the game, you know, I don't, we don't, we're not advertising unraidable bases here. We're advertising on how to have fun. And then, of course, on my servers, after the update, you will be able to buy BCU locks and you will be able to buy smartphone batteries so that we can try and combat the offline raiding. Okay. Although you can only raid over weekends on my servers, there are still, you know, new players joining the servers that didn't read the rules or something like that and for me personally building a wall in front of my door 
is not something I really want to think of. It's not really something that I want to do. So I'll rather just put a BCU lock on, you know, and make sure make sure that my base is protected. Because if anyone raised my base with a BCU lock on and I wasn't online, I could report it to, you know, the owner of the server like me or the admins and get rid of that player, okay? So please leave your comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and click that like button. And please share any ideas that you have so that we can help the, the rest of the community as well. But again, let's keep it fair. Let's not talk about glitching parts through each other and stuff like that. Let's just focus on pure fun so that everyone can enjoy the, themselves and have an equal um, opportunity to have the same amount of fun on a level playing field. Love all of you guys. And yeah, see you guys later. Get ready for the 0.95 update. It's going to be massive.